Welcome back everyone in the part 2 of creating our space shooter game. Link of the part 1 will be in the description. So in the previous video, we have created our moving background and our player. Now in this video, we are gonna first create our bullets for both player and enemy. And then we will create our enemy itself. And lastly, in the third part, we will add a score system and we will create a UI to show it. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Now let's quickly give our player some gun so that it can shoot. For that, we have to make the bullet which is going to be in a separate scene. So for the bullet, I'm gonna use a sprite 2D node. Now inside the images folder, you will find a player bullet image. All you need to do is drag this image and set it in the texture property. Alright, so now we need to add one area 2D node followed by a collision shape. So select the collision shape and in the shapes, I'm gonna use a capsule shape. Now use these points to expand the collision shape so that it covers the entire area. This area 2D and collision shape will detect when we hit something. But there are situations when we didn't hit anything and get off the screen. Then we need to delete the bullet from our game. Now to detect when we are going out of the screen, I'm gonna use a visibility notifier. Now use this dot and cover the entire bullet. Alright, so let's just save the scene first. I'm gonna name it player bullet and I'm gonna save it inside the scene folder where I have store all the scenes. So now let's just select the root node and click on this button to add a script to it. Leave everything else the same and click on this icon to set the location where you want to save. Now I'm gonna put it inside the code folder and hit open and you create. Now if there are any auto-generated code, just delete it. Alright, so to save your time, I have already written the code and now I will explain it to you. So for the player bullet, its only job is to go upward. So first we have created the process function and inside it, we are using a translate function to move the bullet. Now since this node is not a character body node, we can't use the move and slide function that we have used in player. Instead, we have to use the translate function to do this. Now this translate function moves the body along a vector. So for the up direction, the vector will be 0, minus 1. Then for the speed, I have multiplied by 1000 and then multiplied by delta so that we get a fixed movement of speed. Now after that, we want to add a signal from the visibility notifier. To add the signal, click on the visibility notifier. Then beside the inspector, you will see a node tab. Now click on it and there you have all the signal that you can connect to the script. So for now, all I wanted is the screen exited signal. So just double click on it and then you need to select the node that you want to connect with. For now, it is going to be the sprite node and hit connect. Now this will create a function. Now inside it, all you need to do is write Q free because we want to delete the bullet once it get out of the screen. Now once again, click on the area 2D node and this time we want uh, we want to connect the body entered signal to it. So again double click and select the node and then hit connect. Now inside it we first make sure that the body we detected is not player. Then obviously it will be our enemy. Now when we hit the player we will first change the bullet image with our explosion image which is placed inside the image folder. Then we will stop the process function so that our explosion do not move from its position. After that, we will decrease the health of the player by calling the take damage function of the enemy. Right now we didn't have it, but we will create it when we make our enemies. After that, we will stop the function for 0.2 second using this line. And once the timer is completed, we will delete the bullet. And that's all you need to do to create the bullet for the player. Now for the enemy bullets, everything is going to be exactly the same as the player bullet with some minute changes. So I'm just gonna fast forward couple of things. First of all, all the nodes are exactly the same as we have in the player bullet. So the sprite node contain an empty script. Also in the area 2D node, we have connected the body entered signal. And for the visibility notifier, we have connected our screen exited signal, similar to what we have done in the player bullet. Now the only difference is that in the sprite 2D node, Instead of setting the player bullet image, we have set our enemy bullet image. Alright, so there are some few minor changes. So the first change is in the process function. As we know that the direction of the enemy bullet is from top to down. So for this, we're gonna just remove this negative sign. Now inside the body entered function, 
This time we want to check for the player. So we will write double equal to. Now after that, instead of loading the player explosion, we want to load the enemy explosion. So for that, I will just remove this. And actually you don't need to write the path. All you need to do is go into the image and just drag this image here. And it will automatically generate the path. And that's it. We have created both enemy and the player bullet. Now to add these bullet to the player scene, we first need to go into the player scene. Now here we are first going to store the location of the player bullet into a variable. Next we create a variable called can shoot and set is to true. This will track when we can shoot our bullets. After that, switch to the 2D mode and click on the stroke node. And here we are going to add one timer node and one marker 2D node. Now we will use this timer node to create a delay between the bullets and this marker node is just to set the position from where our bullet will appear. So click on the marker node, then click on this icon. This will let you in the move mode. Now once you are in the move mode, you can click anywhere and you can move any objects. So I'm gonna move the marker at the tip of the spaceship and that's it. Now click on the timer node and we want to connect the timeout signal to the script. All right, so after that, when we are detecting the left and right keys, below that, we want to detect when we are pressing the space bar. Now, if you remember from the previous video, we have named our space bar as shoot. So I'm gonna use that one. Now inside it, we're gonna first check if we can shoot. Then if we can, we will call the shoot function, which we will create in a moment. After that, we are going to start the timer for 0.1 second. This is going to be the delay. And after that, we will set the can shoot variable to false so that we don't shoot when the timer is running. Now after that, let's create our shoot function. Now inside it, we first create a variable that gonna store the instance of the bullet scene that we have loaded earlier. After that, we get the parent code, which is going to be the main scene in this case. We are going to add our bullet instance under that scene. So till now, our bullet is added in the game, but its position will be the same as the control node. So that's why it is going to be in the top left corner. So we need to set the position of the bullet to the shooting position, which is going to be the position of the marker that we have set. Now after that, we will come inside the timer timeout function that we have connected earlier. Now inside it, we are just going to first stop the timer and then setting the can shoot to true again, which means we can shoot again. And that's it. You can now just run the game And you will notice when you press the space bar, you can actually shoot the bullets. And it's working perfectly fine. So after creating the player, it's time to create our enemy. So for that, click on this icon to create a new scene. And for the enemy, I'm gonna use a character body node. Then under it, add a collision shape node and a sprite 2D node. We will also need one timer node to control the delay between the bullets and one marker 2D node for setting the position of the bullet. Now first select the sprite 2D node and here we want to set the enemy image to it. So in the images folder, there is an enemy image. Just drag this image in the texture property. After that, we want to set the collision shape. So click on the collision shape and for the shape, I'm gonna use a circle shape this time because this image kind of look like a circle. Now if you can't see the collision shape, just drag this sprite above the collision shape and here it is. Now use this handle to expand and cover it fully. So after that, we want to set the marker's position. So click on the marker 2D. Now I'm gonna drag this in front of the spaceship. And after all of this, I'm just gonna rename the character body node to enemy and the marker 2D node to bullet position. All right, so don't forget to save the scene. And as always, I'm going to save it in the side the scene folder. I'm gonna leave this name as enemy and hit save. Now, the next thing we're going to do is add a script to the enemy. So let's quickly add a script and I'm gonna save it inside the code folder and hit create. Now delete everything else that is auto-generated. Now I'm just gonna add one width variable that is stores the size of the script and one direction variable for the direction. After that, create a ready function and inside it, we're first gonna start a timer for two seconds. This will be the starting delay for the bullet. Next, we get the size of the screen using the get viewport. Next up, we are going to create the physics process function. And now, as you can see in the sprite, if I click on the image, you can see it is 103 pixel wide. 
and the coordinate of the image at this point is 0 comma 0 so if we talk about coordinate of this limit it's going to be half of the width of the image which is going to be around 52 pixels so if i want this image to stay inside the screen all the time the maximum i can go in the right side is 52 pixel left to this right hand limit so that's why in the physics process function we are first going to check if our position is actually greater than the right hand limit that means we have reached the limit of the right hand side then inside it we first gonna revert the direction by setting it to negative one after that we will move our enemy down or we can say towards the player using twin node this twin is basically used to change any property of a node so using this we will increase its position in the y-axis now to use the twin we first need to create it then we will use the twin property method to change the position now this twin property takes four values now the first one is the object whose property we need to change now since we want to change the property of its own that's why we have write self next up is the name of the property and since we want to change the position for the y-axis we have write position y and note that while writing the property name you need to write semicolon instead of a dot next comes the final value of the property for this i have moved it 100 pixel down from its initial position and the last one is the duration in which it should achieve its final position next we are going to do the same thing for the left side as well and here we are looking for when our position is actually less than 52 that means we have gone out of the screen then in that case we are going to switch the direction by setting it to positive one then similar to what we have done earlier we will create a twin and then we will use this twin property to move the enemy down by 100 pixel after that we set the horizontal velocity of the enemy using the direction that we have set earlier and multiply it with some values for the speed and lastly we will call the move and slide function to actually move the enemy and that's it for the enemy movement you can even play the enemy scene and you will notice whenever the enemy hit the left or right side of the screen it changes direction and come 100 pixel down so to set up the shooting of the enemy we first need to get the reference of the enemy bullet scene and also we create a variable can shoot to control our shooting now inside the physics process function at the last we will look for whether we can shoot or not now if we can shoot then we will call the shoot method to shoot the bullet which we will create in a moment after that we start a timer to stop the firing during this time and to make the game engaging instead of setting a fixed value to the timer i have used a rand i function to create a number between 1 and 5 so every enemy will shoot at different time without any fixed pattern after that we will set the can shoot to false so that we don't shoot when the timer is running now go to the timer node and here we want to connect the timer signal to the script and inside it all we are going to do is enable the can shoot so that we can shoot again and stop the timer now after that it's time to write the shoot function so inside the shoot function first we are going to create the instance of the bullet scene that we have loaded earlier after that we get the parent which is going to be the control node and then we add this bullet under it after that we are going to set the position of this bullet to our bullet position node and that's all you need to create the shooting you can now run the game and you will notice our enemy is now shooting bullet at random duration and there is no fixed pattern all right so that's it for the part two of the space shooter game development series we have made incredible progress today creating both player and enemy bullets and in the next and final part of the series get ready for the score system and some ui stuff if you have missed any part of the adventure so far, then don't worry, you can find the links of all the previous video in the description below. If you have any question or suggestion, please leave them in the comment section and I'll be there to help you out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.